Two boxes of wine and a crime is here. Trisha Temple. Join me, Trisha. The host of one of the most popular murder podcasts in the world is missing. Two boxes of wine and a crime is here. <laughs> On the search for Trisha, a new true crime podcast, we delve into the mysterious disappearance of Trisha Temple. <laughs> Drunk off our ass. Host of Two Boxes of Wine and a Crime. Join us as we follow the trail of evidence and interview those close to Trisha to uncover the truth behind her vanishing. You should have seen the letters that people sent them to Trisha. They were so hateful. <laughs> Fuck you in the head, you bitch. I would get nothing but fan mail. What do you say to people who think this is all a publicity stunt? Say it to my face, bitch. And I'll cut your fucking throat. Was it a random crime or something more sinister? I'll gut you like a fish, bitch. The Search for Trisha, a gripping true crime investigation that will keep you on the edge of your seat. We have it all figured out, or at least we think we do. <laughs> Don't miss episode one, out now. Bitch. The best bits, or whatever. Brace yourself for a major turn of events! We are releasing some Patreon Q&A episodes we did last summer, I believe. The world is holding its breath in anticipation! So here we are, cutting to ourselves from last summer, answering questions from Patreon. Enjoy! Round three! Hello and welcome to another episode of the Mini Bits. This is episode 29, which is the same as the temperature right now in London. And I'm here with Will, who is sitting opposite me wearing a fleece in Donegal. It's absolutely Baltic in Donegal right now. It's a, it's, I can't believe we're having such different uh, weather experiences. It's disgusting. It's really offensive to me to see you in a fleece because yeah. my balls are stuck to my thigh. <laughs> There's not enough talcum powder in the world. <gasps> oh, Lord Christ. Oh, God. Oh, God. There's an image. You've just put an image in my head that I that I truly just want. I want ejected from there as soon as possible, Kevin. Um, I hope at least I will... Well, turn off your camera, Will. <laughs> at least you're dressed this time, Kevin. That's the one saving grace, I would say. It's a few degrees cooler than it was when we did the last one, but it's still outrageously hot. I've only ever experienced extreme temperatures, and that was in... Qatar when I was in Qatar a long time ago and I remember what were you doing in Qatar? I was up in Qatar a couple of times went out for a film festival and then they got me back to do like a week long workshop oh I remember that oh fuck I was really jealous of you when you did that fucking hell the week long workshop didn't you fly first class? yeah they flew me out first class they put me up in a five star hotel (sighs) and they fed me like one of those Wagyu beef cows they fed you what? fed me like one of those fancy cows Japanese cows they just just fed me a from Japanese cow. You know, it's, why is that fancy? Wagyu. What are they called? It's Wagyu beef. Where they have these cows. Is it a ninja cow? <laughs> yeah, it's a ninja cow. An incredibly overweight, but incredibly well pampered ninja cow. It takes so much more effort to, to slaughter one of those cows because they fight back. <laughs> <laughs> I've never been as well treated in my life as I was the week I was out in Qatar. What about the human rights violations, though? The only thing that felt a bit icky was in these sweltering temperatures seeing like like I, I couldn't spend more than five minutes out in the, the direct sunlight and I would go into this five star hotel and go up to my whatever 30th floor apartment and look out at another hotel being constructed opposite me with these guys working in that heat hanging off the side of the building I was going oh god that's not good that's Imagine. not good and I remember being driven to some place and uh uh, passing signs like you know, one sign said uh, you know you'd have signs that say library another one says death camp uh, courthouse another one and another sign <laughs> said public executions I was, I was like oh right that's horrible that's really <gasps> okay. disturbing yeah so you were complicit in propping up the regime in Qatar I felt I was acting as uh, an agent for change because we had female <laughs> filmmakers this is actually true we had female filmmakers as a part of the group and we had people trying to, and I felt I felt the anxiety of young filmmakers trying to tell stories in a oppressive uh, uh, system, and 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 stuff that we take for granted here. A dangerously felt, oppressive system. Yeah, and I and I felt I felt like oh, I'm trying to give these people 
uh, some tools that may, might get him in trouble. Um, yeah, so I, you could feel the edge. I could feel the the a little bit of the anxiety of the filmmakers. Um, so, so That's I don't fascinating. feel fascinating. It was an interesting. It was an wow. It was an amazing, uh, amazing time over there. I was in an. Um, I got a, a private uh, trip to a this. They were, they were like sheiks, like you know, and um, this one guy, the sheik, he has a, his own private museum, and it, and so we got myself and some Italian journalists. I think got a private trip to this museum. And it was the biggest museum I've ever been in my life. It was private. It's his own private thing. And you would go in and there would be this vast one room, vast room dedicated to doors, right? All sorts of doors. It sounds like that uh, museum that the the Queen had in uh, Return to Oz. Yeah, kind of. Yeah. There was one room that was dedicated. It was a warehouse dedicated to modes of transport. So they had all sorts of cars, like a New York taxi cab, a black London cab, then go back to Model T Fords. Then they had like... That sounds fucking cool. Boats, like huge vessels inside there. Then they had Formula... Michael Schumacher's last Formula One car and a, a Williams Formula One car. Just scrap metal was... Oh, fucking hell. I was there. All these Italian journalists. I'm surprised these Italian journalists weren't all over, but I was just rubbing myself against it, just going, oh my God, this is incredible. So well, was- you just put an image in my head now, which is worse than any image I put in your head. <laughs> Sorry. I'm not that creepy about uh, motorsport. I once went up to Scotland to uh, give a screenwriting talk to a bunch of Neds. and um, Neds? I've never heard Neds. that. Neds, they're like... Um, that might be derogatory but they're like um kids from disadvantaged backgrounds who are acting out and getting cautions from the police right right that sort yeah and it was it sort of turned into a bit of a therapy session oh wow i was telling them how to personalize the stories and not try to emulate other people but that each one of them had their superpower and that the more that you want to tell a story that is really true to your life experience, mm-hmm. then there's no way in hell that I could ever attempt to write anything as good as what you would do in that space. So if you want to be better than everybody else, just be yourself. Mm-hmm. Great and, advice. Um, they chased me out of there with like <laughs> bike locks. But <laughs> <laughs> it was a good experience. Scotland is beautiful it's such did, a beautiful country did you say what part did you say where, where's edinburgh it? edinburgh yeah. okay yeah beautiful it was just outside edinburgh but edinburgh itself is like edinburgh itself feels like it was designed by the harry potter production team wow we were talking about going to Ed, going to scotland summer at some stage um but we haven't committed to it we haven't committed to a plan yet if you do i'd say go by the ferry Oh yeah, that's what we're going to do. There's so many flights being cancelled. Will, will we get into it? Because we're... Yeah, we're, we're burning We're burning time here. We could, we could change the title of this episode and just go random chat again. <laughs> yeah, no, no. Let's do it, let's do it, let's do it. Uh, are you going to set a timer, Kevin? I am. We're going to do another Q&A episode. We've got more questions. And um, we're back now prepping for the season. So we're back to sort of like watching films for that rather than new films that we can talk about yeah but uh, let me get the clock up here okay what will we go for 35 minutes yeah let's do 35 minutes here we go starting the timer now Kevin I'm gonna give you William the first question and it is from Don again you're a nemesis he's not my nemesis I don't even think about him (laughs) Don asks a very good question. He said, yes, how would you improve it if you were given the job to write the next Fast and the Furious film if perfection can be improved? I have an answer to that. I have an answer too. Go on. What's your answer? Opening scene. A hundred car pile up. <laughs> all dead. My, and this is a genuine, this is my genuine thought on the Fast and Furious franchise. Honest to Christ, I would kill off Don. I would kill him off as Don. soon as I as soon as I you got kill my off hands Don. on him. I mean that's where we both agree. <laughs> is it is it not Don? Is it Don not Vin, did Vin Diesel's character? Is that why Don likes Vin Diesel in that movie? It's <laughs> because he's, he's Don as well. <laughs> Maybe he's dumb. Maybe he's dumb. Basically 
<laughs> I would kill off Vin Diesel's character. As Let me soon look as this up because I've never watched a single one of those fucking movies. Fast and the Furious. You have not. You're lying. You I've not have seen, seen a single one of them. They look You're... inane to me. And every time he goes, <gasps> for a blue, I just want to <laughs> walk out. This is, this is, you are literally judging the film by the poster and the well, trailer. I have never shit broken glass either, but I know that I wouldn't enjoy it. I've watched all of them and I've had all of the emotions with these films. I have disgust, hated them. rage. I have had disgust. I've had boredom. I have I have had uh, just malaise, but I've also had... Uh, it's Dom, laugh. Dom Toretto, sorry. Dom, okay. Dom Toretto. Yeah, I'd kill off Dom and I'd either kill him off and then potentially bring him back as a ghost. How would you kill him? Oh, oh, you know, I, he has to be run he's over. He's going to be run over, or he's going to be in a. He's got. It's the worst car wreck. The car gets split in in quarters, not in half. And there's a like he's he gets hung, drawn, and quartered by, you know, the car wreck. So there's a limb in each in each quarter of the car <laughs> as it rolls down a highway. And that last thing he says, family. <laughs> yes, the last thing would come out of his mouth. Steamroller, but uh, but I'm going to leave a crack. Steamroller for me, cr- a crack in the door open for his ghost to make a comeback. They're probably going to do something like that. I mean, yeah. crikey, such a yeah. But I do think the films would be a lot better if he was no longer involved. I know that's essentially taking the heart out of the thing, but he's shit. So get rid of him. The heart, he's the heart. My God, he's he's family. Kevin, you give me a question now. This is a question from uh, Lisa, my mate. Okay. Uh, she says, Dear Squally and Bubble. So someone's been listening to the podcast. Thanks, Lisa. Uh, any favorite video essayists? Oh, uh, YouTube essayists. Um, oh, maybe that doesn't necessarily mean just film. Um, it can be about- no, I'm sure it's not. I have a few people that I l- follow. Let me get Well... Up. I can immediately just say, uh, of course, Red Letter Media is great fun. I yeah. just love their, their, that's great fun. But also there's the one, um, the, <clears throat> is it the Art of the Frame or the... No, of, Every Frame of Painting. Called? Every Frame of Painting. I've always enjoyed those ones. I think they're He's gone really quiet though, good. hasn't he, that guy? Yeah, he does very, he doesn't do that many, but you know, they're, they're all... His previous ones are all still up there, so they're well worth a watch. Okay, I'm just looking at my thing. subscribes here, and I like Cold Crash Pictures. Oh, what's that about? It's a, a sort of... Um, a, all of these ones that I have here are sort of film students or, or film lovers who end up dissecting or uh, investigating the themes and the creation of movies and TV show. The one I was just right. watching the other day from Cold Crash Pictures was how Dinosaurs, the Jim Henson TV series, was yeah. all about capitalism. And um, it was fascinating and really, really well done. So uh, that's one I just watched recently and I really like his stuff. I also like a, a, a sort of a smaller channel called, well, the guy that does it is Leighton Eversol. And okay. he it does retrospectives and he... He does, um, oh God, do you remember film filmumentaries? Yeah, I do. Uh, he, film, oh yeah, 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 Jamie Benning or something like that. Yeah, yeah. he did one on Jaws and, and Indiana Jones, and it would be sort of like cobbling together all of the behind the scenes footage with audio commentaries and cutting in the movies and, and sort of doing this hybrid version of a commentary with a documentary. And yeah. they were all on Vimeo and they were fantastic. And I think rights issues has meant that he can't do them anymore I don't think uh, but Leighton Eversol does something similar to that and he'll do th- stuff like he'll go back through the Jaws films and talk about the creation of them and what who was cast and who dropped out and what they were paid and and it, they're fascinating deep dives I also like Captain Midnight um, oh he's the guy who dice oh no I'm getting that's I'm thinking of Captain Disillusionment he's also there I've, Captain Disillusion is the guy that sort of um, debunks pranks yeah. and, and spoof videos he's been um, going for a long time he's it's brilliant good. yeah uh, but Captain Midnight is one where they'll go through recent TV and movies and sort of um, talk about where they've gone wrong like they just did one on on uh, the l- latest Jurassic Park film and he basically reiterated everything that we were saying 
Right. So those are ones that I like, and Red Letter Media and every favorite printing. I got a couple more actually now that I just literally pulled up YouTube. Um, a couple of screenwritery ones. Nerd Writer, he's uh, pretty good. Uh, he does, he's kind of film video essayist stuff. Um, oh, a, a video game one, which I love, is No Clip. No Clip. And it is by Danny O'Dyer. He's an Irish guy, but he's a big name. His in- name is Danny O'Dyer. Danny, Danny O. Danny O'Dwyer is his name. Okay. Danny O'Dwyer. I was going Danny O'Danny. Danny, yeah, he's Danny O'Dwyer is his name. Danny Dyer and Danny O'Dyer. Yeah, no, and Danny O'Danny. Um, he does amazing, oh, proper, proper do, documentaries. Really, is what they are. They're uh, documentaries about the making of classic video games. Incredibly, incredibly well put together, researched, interviewed. He properly goes and travels to places. Like, do, I did an amazing one about the origin of uh, GTA recently. There's a city in Scotland, actually, speaking of Scotland, I think it's Dundee, is one of the, uh, what's the word, ground zero for contemporary video games, where Grand Theft Auto was born out of uh, Dundee. All these um, kind of influential video games uh, sparked in this one little place from a fucking computer club and all these guys came together with computers and it's one of those amazing little stories of how creativity uh, and interest for a particular subject spawned an entire industry and uh, created a multi-billion uh, uh, you know influenced a multi-billion dollar industry as well so Danny O'Dwyer's no clip is excellent as well so um, yeah I'll recommend that cool I don't know either of those so I'm going to subscribe to those mm-hmm. Nerd Writer's very good as well yeah yeah very good Okay, um, I got one from Ray, Ray Bogdanovich. Ray asks, oh, this is one of those career, one of those career questions, Kevin. Okay. If you, if you would say one line of inspiration to a hungry soul wanting to make it into this cunty business, what would it be? <laughs> I feel like I've already said that on, on my career chat. Oh, maybe you have. What else could I say? If one piece of advice, um... See, the thing for me is that I feel the longer I've done it, the less I know. Like, the less dogmas that I feel are that hold water. Um, because for every bit of advice that I could give, there'd be a counterpoint which is equally as valid. Um, so they, everything sort of counters itself out. Do you know what I mean? Uh, yeah. Um, one piece of advice. I would say... Again, write what you know. Like what I was saying to those students in, in Edinburgh. Um, I think write what you know is like what you know about people, what you know about relationships. Write that into whatever you do. So you could have you could have a movie about an astronaut and you've never been to space. And you can mm-hmm. write about that. But that person, that astronaut, has to be true to who, what you think or what you know to be true about people and about... Um, life yeah. so that's what I feel right what you know means so personalize the story focus in on yourself as fast as you can and make sure that the stuff that you write can only be written by you and that nobody else could write what you're writing as well as you can write it and the only way again to do that is to personalize it as much as possible I had that experience that exact experience this morning where I'm <clears throat> in the very early stages of a of a of a film, which is very nebulous at the moment. But um, anyway, it's it's a subject. What's it about? I can't tell you because <laughs> it's I can't I literally can't say. But it's it's literally it says in a, in a place I've never been in a time period in which I've never lived. Uh, it's you know with characters who have experienced things that I've never experienced, and I was trying to figure out okay how's my way into this. And, but I had like I've got a couple little facts to work from like specific moments but I was able to find an emotional anchor what they experienced there must have been the same experience I had at a certain point in my life basically we all experience the same emotions this is the thing can I say watching TikTok there's a trend does anybody else do this and the amount of shit that we all do it's like a, I'll give you two examples You'll be lying in bed or lying down and you'll stretch your arm up into the air and just hold it. Yeah. It's like, why do we do that? So sometimes you do that, yeah. Sometimes yeah, you yeah. do that and everybody does it. Or you'll finish drinking a bottle of water or a bottle of orange juice, whatever, and then you'll bump the bottle, the empty bottle off your head. <laughs> yeah, that's right. 
It's we all right. do that. Why do we do that? <laughs> There's something very satisfying about that dunk, dunk, there dunk. There is, that but it's like dunk. we're all the fucking same person. We have no original experiences. Yeah. yeah. So that's going to your point is basically if you can find something that you go, I I feel that reason. I feel that thing that I don't quite understand I, I, I've done or I do, but I can kind of see parallels between that and this other experience then usually if you kind of like hang on that and actually trying to find the truth in your own experience, you can, can potentially mine uh, fruitful things that'll be useful in the, the story. That's what I would say. Um, my advice, my only really advice is I agree with you completely. The more you do, the more you realize there are no rules. There are no rules. It's a whole, the industry is a shifting, it's a desert of shifting sand dunes. But my, so my only advice is enjoy the, enjoy the actual doing as long as you're having fun. Also, you can't really copy anybody else's process. Uh, no. You've got to figure it out for yourself. It's like you might like somebody's writing, but copying the process is like copying their handwriting. Yeah. And thinking that by copying the handwriting, you're going to get the same uh, words on the page and you're not. There's no right way to do it. Yeah. It's just whatever works for you is the right way for you to do it. Mm-hmm. And just get to the end, just finish it. And, we, um, and don't we, care so much. We've learned, I've learned from doing the podcast with you so much that we have two totally different processes. Our brains work through problems differently. And that's just you and me. And we're totally different. We're kind of doing the same thing. We're creating the same thing, but we have totally different ways of solving problems. What do you think are the things that are different from us? Because I remember you, you were talking about um, dialogue for me is easy, but dialogue for you is the last step of writing a scene dialogue, dialogue for me is like is like the, the, the finessing is the final final thing that I get to the process wise the big difference between you and me a thing that you do that I would never ever do is you can write you could write completely disconnected scenes you could write a scene you could write a scene at the end of your film you could just start at the end of your film oh I jump of, around write, a lot yeah you jump around whereas with me my, well, I couldn't possibly do that I have to we also start, edit that way yeah, we told. I have to go the whole way through. I have to. If I'm writing a screenplay, I have to get to the end as quickly as possible. And I will, that's my f- starting point. I'll edit the intro and the outro first, and then I. Oh will my just, god! Yeah, <laughs> I'll, I'll, do that. I'll edit as I go. Right. Where you you listen all the way through, and you multiple times. Yeah, I listen through multiple I times. I never. I listen through once. So there's a downside to that, though, and it's the same with writing: is that I will edit a sequence of the podcast and then we'll say the exact same thing we'll repeat ourselves two minutes later but say it better and I'm like oh fuck I put all that so, effort into that yeah, section and then I'll now go back said, and I'll cut yeah. that section and so that's why that's where my process is is I'm, I kind of I work on a macro level uh, first of all and just it, my my mind is just get the, the big stuff done first of all get the kind of like find the lay of the land and make little notes as you go along but just get to the end as quickly as you can and once I get to the end and once I have a document that's fucking easy for me to go back and just tinker that's the fun bit I'm also not precious there's no criticism that you can give me that will hurt me no notes you can give me that will affect me and people are very skeptical of that they'll hear me say like you can say whatever you want you can give me as many notes as you want it's not going to change my mood and they think well you don't care then or they, they'd never articulate that to me but they do think like oh well wait until you get my notes or whatever and they might be really excoriating notes but it does not affect me it's like okay i can fix that i can't fix that i can fix that that's easy to fix and they're sort of like blindsided by my sort of like reaction to, the, to to those things but I'm really I'm not precious mm. this is going to sound absolutely like egotistical but I know what I can do and I know how I'm going to do it the only time I get nervous is when I think that I'm out of my depth and I don't think I can do it and I've just I've learned what spaces I do my best work in I know I'm good basically is what I'm trying to there say you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know you're not shit you can do it you can do it now yeah. Kevin you can give me a question do you write with an Irish accent? This is from Dean Lyons. No, I don't. I just write. And Wow, okay. I don't write with an Irish accent. I just have the words down on the page. I don't think with an Irish accent. Oh, I do. I don't think with an Irish accent. I just think. You, uh, so you have I'm... to think with it. All right, do you, do you hear a voice when you think? I don't know. I don't know how to answer that. I don't know how to answer it. I yeah, just have obviously. thoughts. Okay, this is going to get very interesting now. Do you have an internal monologue? Yeah. 
a lot. Yeah, obviously, because it's going all the time. But I don't hear its accent. You don't hear its what? Its accent. No, but your internal monologue is your own voice. Yeah, but I. It's like, but that's the thing. It's the same thing as asking me, do I do I write in it with an accent? It's like, is does my internal monologue have an accent? Of course it does. It sounds like you. Exactly. I don't hear my own accent. This uh, is the thing. People don't think. Do you ever? You know, most people don't think they have an accent. I think I have an accent. I know you have. I an accent. once got completely stoned on Fraser Island. I might have said this to you before. I got completely stoned on Fraser Island eating pot cookies from was it Nimbim? And um, I ate the whole cookie, and it blew my brains out. And I remember saying out loud, "Oh my god, I, I can really hear my accent." <laughs> it was it was like being outside myself and hearing myself speak, and I could really hear my my accent coming through. People thought it was hilarious, but it was really disconcerting. But of course, I do. I will write things, the dialogue and the character. I feel quite well versed now in writing English characters and American characters. Ah, no, this is different. This is different. When I'm writing characters, I'm writing. I'm writing a voice. All right. So characters right. say to each other, "How are you?" The, the character That's, can respond, "I'm grand. I'm fine. I'm good." That's three very distinct personalities from three absolutely. very different places. Yeah. When writing characters, uh, you know I yourself. Have, I have. I have accents obviously personalities for the characters and they might have an accent of course they might have an accent but when I'm writing let's say uh, uh, scene descriptions that doesn't that's not accent you know if I'm writing prose there's there's no accent in that on Grabbers I wrote the entire thing in an Irish accent I'll say something to you when I'm reading a book and I know this is not the fastest way to read a book I cast all of the roles in the book that I read so when I'm reading I'll find a narrator's voice and I'll read the narrator's voice. Let's say if it was, depending on, I try and cast it maybe generic voice. I'd say if I was reading a Harry Potter, I'd re- cast Stephen Fry as the narrator's voice, and I would cast the characters, and I would have voices for the characters in my head. That's bizarre. So, so I would read, I would read the, their their dialogue on the page in their voices, in the actors' voices in my head, and I would, <clears throat> and honestly, I process it so much better when I do because I think when it, well, I just scan I don't the, the, the words don't sink in so I read really slowly and um, yeah so that's kind of maybe I f- do that for writing as well let me follow up on this though where you say you don't have an accent um, I do have an accent but I don't hear it alright so if if I if you were driving down the road and somebody cuts you off and you're thinking to yourself would you go that fucking go or that langer or that yeah of course I would Yeah, I would that's an accent that's not an accent. An accent is a sound. And I, we're, I think we're, we're mixing up accents and... But that's and what Dean means by that. He's dialing. like saying, do you write with an Irish voice? Oh, oh, right. Sorry. You see, I'm... Okay, I'm misunderstanding. I'm misunderstanding what accent means because accent in my head is not the words, but, but how you sound. Oh, right. So you're taking it on how your... The, the cadence and, and how your yeah, voice sounds. Yeah, that's to me what an accent is. It's like, you know, we could all say, how are you in different accents? Like, you know... Or hello, and different. In a, I give you a Donegal hello. And well, I'm still going to say that my internal monologue is a Cork accent. No, my my internal monologue is vanilla. Vanilla, right? yeah. In my head, I in my if you if you had a tap into my internal but monologue, this is you'd probably where I'm, I'm it. having this huge disconnect with you. Your internal monologue is not your own voice. It is my own voice, but you think that your own voice is vanilla. I don't. This is. I don't know. We're going around in circles, right? We're going around in circles, right? Listen to me. Listen I know me. I have an accent. I know I have an accent, right? But I'm not there, sitting there, listening to my own accent, going, "Oh, listen to me speak. Listen to me thinking to myself in a Donegal or a or a Galway or a Cork accent. Listen to listen to me. Oh, jeez, that was very Cork of you to think. But to your think internal in that monologue way. is an Irish voice. <clears throat> yeah, of course. Well. It's yeah, of course it's an Irish voice. It's it's my voice. It's I don't, but I don't think about the accent. Do you know what I mean? And again, I think we're we're confusing accent. Do you know there versus, are some people that have no internal monologue? It's silent. I am amazed, and I envy them. I, I don't think that they can. I don't think you can be creative if you have a silent uh, head. If I think you'd be very analytical, but how? Like if you don't have an internal monologue, I just don't know how you could actually be a screenwriter for one thing. I've, I I, I, I want to say this through meditation, right? 
through only through a lot of meditation i've i've found a headspace where i i found quietness in my own head and it is lovely it is lovely and creativity comes from that as well i think i have undiagnosed adhd because i cannot do meditation or mindfulness i've tried it i can't do it it's it's not it's not for everyone and it's and it is hard and it takes it takes um, application and it takes, like, you know, it takes a bit of work to get it right. But, Are you um, a fast sleeper? Do you fall asleep quickly? I, I have to, for, if I'm, I have to read or I have to, like, look at something. If I, if I was lying in bed yeah. with nothing, yeah. I'll be up till two in the morning. So I have to shut down my brain. I have to find So your internal monologue down. is from, oh, shit. Yes, no, yes. come on, stay oh, yes. from, it's, and, and you know, and you know, this is the worst thing, the true thing about human nature is that, and I learned this the hard way, you know, in the middle of the night, your darkest, your, your brain seems to go fucking crazy. Yeah. Right? Never, and that's when the, never make any life decisions at three in the morning. Nothing I, good I, will come of it. After, there's an actual physiological reason behind this. Uh, it's because our part of our brain shuts down at around 11 o'clock at night. At the, at the, in, during the wee hours a part of our rational brain goes to sleep and our kind of um, when you are awake your primordial brain is still awake and so your rational brain actually kind of just goes into standby mode so that's why at night time your kind of you know just you know, sometimes irrational thoughts come can go racing through your mind at night time and your rational brain doesn't kind of wake up until the morning it sounds crazy but it's so true I wonder whether there's been any studies about the time that people commit suicide and whether it's three in the morning. Oh, I don't know. I think they're two different. I think they're two different things. Why are they two different things? It's the irrational behavior of well, somebody I think, who's not thinking straight. Okay, good question. Are you talking about kind of like impulsive suicide? Is that what you're, you're getting at? Yeah, I, 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 think, I think, yeah, you can have very dark thoughts at three in the morning. Definitely, yeah, yeah. I have, yeah. The last few nights, I've, I have been, I have been tormented at night. The last few nights. Why? What have I done, <laughs> Kevin? Doing podcasts with you in a heat wave. Oh my god! <laughs> Just having flashbacks to me sitting there, nipples out, talking about my process. It's like, what, what is, what is my life? <laughs> Kevin wearing aviator glasses and just seeing just seeing his hairy chest. Oh God! <laughs> Should, I don't know if we've answered. I don't know what the question was. I can't even remember. <laughs> we just started, I got sidetracked by you saying you don't have an accent in your head. I was like, what the fuck? I, just, okay. I think that was a miss a miss uh, a misunderstanding of what I I, I felt accent meant. Um, but, um, yeah. Okay. Do you have? Oh, you ask me. I'll ask you a question. Now. All right. Go ahead. Yes. I'm going to go, right? I think, back to Lisa, right? Okay. <laughs> it's a funny one. Did you ever bring a girl to the cinema, but then actually just sit and watch the film? You nerds. <laughs> I talked on the podcast once about when I took a girl to see Scream 2, and yeah. I tried to I tried to, to be witty and and like interesting and fun and and i remember leaning over to her and whispering in her ear i bet he's behind the pallets or something like that but as i leant over he jumped the the killer jumped out from behind the pallets and the whole cinema screamed and so i just reacted to that and so i leant over and screamed into her ear and she just (laughs) looked at me like why did you do that and i couldn't Explain what I what I meant. It just looked like I was an idiot who leaned over and just decided like uh, to prank her. <laughs> but I think taking anyone to the cinema um, on a date is a bad move because yeah. you can't really talk during the film. On a first date, awful idea on a first date, particularly. I think you need to be married to take people to yeah. the cinema where you don't want to talk long- to each other. Uh, yeah, a long term relationship. You're comfortable in silences. Yeah, and you both want to go and watch the film. I had, I, I, my very first date, as I would call it, we Irish people wouldn't call it dates, was to go and see a film. You were jagging. <laughs> and it was awful because I genuinely wanted to see, I, I genuinely wanted to see the film and I was completely You went conflicted. to see Blue Valentine. We went to see, what did we see? It was Interview with the Vampire. 
and um Interview and like oh, the vampire yeah it's a long time ago oh, and right. uh I, we're there watching the film and uh i was like going i just kind of want to watch the film <laughs> i just kind of want and um yeah oh it was such a if i could turn back time did you, I did would you lean over and go wished wished yeah. yes so we'll wished the wild, will you we'll just watch the film this is this is tom cruise really taking a taking a bold move here with his career I looked to definitely that brad pitt and you know, what was the steve martin joke that we said did you, did you know, know tom, tom cruise, cruise had no idea he was in that vampire, vampire movie until two, two years later, later. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> um oh god but yeah. i completely agree kevin i completely agree activities do things yeah go Bowling. for a meal Go, yeah, I'd bowl. You're right. Activities. Go, go, go. Do something where you're sharing an experience. Stuff that's going to spark up moments that you can react to. Yeah, not where you have to sit beside each other in silence. And if one person is a film nerd, they actually <laughs> just want to watch the fucking film. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, it's a, honestly go kart and do something fun and um and interesting. Join, join a Quidditch league. <laughs> Go to a quiz and be on competing teams. <laughs> Go to a bare knuckle boxing fight. Sign her up. Sign her up. Shove her, shove her in. <laughs> She's like, what the fuck are you trying to do? I believe in you. I think. <laughs> I think. If, any, if anyone asks your name, your name's Pancake, all right? You're Pancake. Right. I've got 200 writing on this. You can <laughs> <laughs> and your fucking left wrist is sprained but then when I say swing you fucking throw it right do you know what is a great date though and I went on this once uh, uh, but it was a staff party it wasn't a date to the dog track oh wow oh it's a fucking great night out wow yeah there you go <laughs> I was just gonna wait I was waiting for some sort of punchline to this I was waiting for some sort of fucking punchline no they don't really have dog tracks anymore but uh there's a good one yeah. in Cork there's one in Galway and there's one up here in Donegal actually yeah I've been at uh, all of them there you go yeah, my my dog would not partake in it. Um, Neither would mine. So who's? Oh, you asked me a question. That was a gr- another great <sighs> question from Lisa. My dog. Oh, no, no, we're going to bring down the, the tone of the conversation now. As soon as I said that, now I just do. I have to ask you one. You ask me one now. All right, I've got a question here for you, Will, and it's from James. Okay. And James asks, "What differences, if any, have you noticed living in Donegal, having grown up in Cork?" Oh God! Oh God! Okay. Uh, 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 topographical differences first of all I grew up in nice rolling green rich green fielded countryside and up here in Donegal it is well in South Donegal it is uh, a shit tip it's not shit it's rolling hills and uh, lots of sheep whereas down in Cork there's lots of lots of cows okay so that's um, agricultural the w- one big difference is the, the different senses of humour there's, but there's a different sense of humour between North and uh, not Ulster and let's we'll say Munster. Um, Do your kids have a Donegal sense of humour or a Cork sense of humour? Oh my kid! No, you see, Karen has got a, a really snappy sense of humour, and so Luke, he's a, a real comedian and very very funny. Naturally, just a funny guy with great timing, and uh, probably Ellie's a bit more like me, where she's um, we moan. <laughs> We're two, we're two mourners, too sensitive and moan too much. That's probably you're it. not a mourner. Oh God, that there timer. Go. <laughs> there we go. Got to moan about the time. There we go. Round three. That was really enjoyable. It was. You're getting better at this. Thanks, Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> you're getting slightly worse. <laughs> you do actually moan a lot. I take it back. <laughs> <laughs> um. Do you have anything you could recommend, Kevin? Ha ha ha, I can say it to you first. Uh, you fuck that's, that's, it. Um, that's, that's what I'm just doing, man. <laughs> just getting it out there so I can think of something. I'm going to recommend uh, um, Captain Midnight, the YouTube channel. You've already make it recommended it during the I haven't. Q&A. I haven't. Um, um, hey. I'm going to recommend Outrageous Conduct, the book that I um, am reading at the moment. Which we've already recommended oh, on the previous off. thing. We're doing too many of these. Hey, um, I'll give you. I'll recommend something, right? So this is completely my daughter. It's uh, it was Karen's when we're recording. It's Karen's birthday, and so she went. We got picked up um, presents. So Ellie spotted 
something in a shop and I went and she knew what it was and I didn't know what it was, right? It's a pop lock. Are you looking at it? Yeah. I've never seen one of these things before. My God, and she well, went, welcome to 2016. Yeah. <laughs> she said, and Ellie says to me, says, Ellie's six. No, Ellie's still five, right? She's still technically five. And she went, oh my God, look at that. That's something you put on the back of your phone so it doesn't fall. And I went, what? And so uh, she says, we should get one for, for her birthday. And so she picked one up for her birthday. And um, yeah. And it, you took it. I and well actually we picked up two, right? So she got one for she, yourself. So got one for myself. It's something you put on the back of your phone, right? Okay, twenty ten. Okay, go there on. are there are girls that, that consider that to be um an ick. <gasps> if you have a like, pop lock, it's an ick. Yeah, for girls it is, yeah. Really? They don't like guys with pop locks. Oh shit. Well I You don't have to worry this. about that, you're married. But hold on a second, I didn't realise this is a kind of a, a social Also, there's, there's nobody up there that'll, um, that'll know what that is in Donegal. My ch- <laughs> my ch- Well, the five-year-olds in Donegal know what it is. I just went, this is so handy when you're holding your phone. It's like, wow, that's so... Yeah. I think it's a great little invention, so that's my recommendation. Yeah. It's something which Kevin has informed Wait me. Wait till you find Nick. out what happens at the end of a Game of Thrones. <laughs> no, Mr. Smarty Pants, what are you going to recommend? And please don't recommend something that you've recommended twice already. All right, fuck you so <laughs> Bye. The best bits or oh, whatever. And here is a clip from the lads' latest mini bits bonus show. The full episode plus 80 more are available on their Patreon. See ya, Mossy. I gotta go in and record another one of these fucking mini bits. Oh, yes, it's such a little I know. <sighs> what are you doing? I, right now, on the Academy screener site, and I hit play because there's only a few films on it for the first month or two. There's only like about less than 10 films on it. And Guy Ritchie's The Covenant is on here. So I hit play on that and I'm hearing all the, we're out in Afghanistan and I'm hearing all the dirt and I hear vehicles and I hear the sound effects of characters walking. But when characters open their mouths, I don't hear any dialogue. Mm-hmm. Oh, they've up- no dialogue. They've uploaded the wrong audio track. It's like that Tom Cruise yeah. trailer where it was just a sound effect. Have you met an SP? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and this film has been up on the screen site for a few weeks now, and they still have the wrong one here. Well, I tell you what, films are actually up there for all Academy members to see, and they see what they've put up. Do there. but first of all, let's just throw to our theme, and I have to say. The feedback from my thank you ballad thank you. was quite fierce. The power of Christ compels you. So I asked Mossy, who is a friend of my dad's at the quiz, sing us a theme tune. Oh. So over to Mossy. <laughs> I can hit the cards. I'm fine. I'll get it done from one day. It's the many bits. Oh, my guess what will they say? With Will and Kevin Cock. The best fucking podcast. That'll do. <laughs> That'll do. My God. Thank you, Mossy. He would make an angel weep. That voice would make an angel weep. Telling you. Beautiful. Beautiful. Boolabus. It only cost us two months' patron money, so, you know. Is that all? Money well spent, in my eyes. Yeah. I mean, you can't get much for 20 euro. <laughs> Will, you were telling me before uh, the intro that you uh, were looking at stuff on the Academy Screeners website. The Academy Awards, so for official members, yes. So how we, they don't send out DVDs anymore. So how you do all your streaming stuff is all via the Academy website. And the streaming season has begun, which is exciting. So it means for the rest of the year. I'm Did it be- ever end? Uh, it does end. It does end. after the Academy Awards. There's about two weeks, and they <laughs> take all the films down, and then they begin again at the end of August, and they all start coming up. So it's a whole new collection of hopefuls. So how many films are on there right now? About ten, actually ten exactly. I can tell you the ten. 
Oh, go on, tell me. John Wick 4. For the Oscars. Oh, because <laughs> there's like... Yes, there's... they're adding in stunt category, aren't they? Are they adding it in? Is the stunt category being added? I believe they're adding in some sort of stunt category. Breaking news straight from an Academy member's mouth. Because they're adding in stunt category, aren't they? Slash film. I don't know. Did I see, read this in an article? I feel they were. They... I felt they were. ...have long overlooked stunts. And my God, it's pure artistry. Yeah. And it is incredibly well these days it's all fucking rubber computer generated avatars that's why we should highlight that's why pe- these people should be getting their oscars when yeah. back then someone's actually gone out then. yeah go back, back to, absolutely go back and back give it to your man from mad max who broke his legs and uh, give it to richard farnsworth who uh, was a stuntman and uh, starred in the straight story yeah richard farnsworth is, was a career stuntman oh. absolutely wasn't that also mm-hmm. the case with um uh, Machete. What's your man, Machete? Danny Trejo. Danny Trejo. Is really? Trejo or Trejo? I always call him Trejo. But he just says, call me Danny. <laughs> I was going to say that back to you. Nah. Like, just, uh, <laughs> we were. Just call him Danny. 